Hi, and welcome to the Writing 122 Introduction to Critical Thinking and Reading video. This will be a short lecture, and it's meant to help put you into the right mindset for this class as you engage with the first few assignments. So first of all, what is critical thinking? Uh, there are a few things, few ways I want us to look at this. The first is critical thinking is thinking that examines issues from multiple perspectives to try to better understand them. So this means that someone who's thinking critically isn't just focused on their own viewpoint and why they have that viewpoint, but it's also thinking about, okay, what might another viewpoint be and why? And how about another and another? Because uh, most issues have more than two sides. This is also thinking that includes questioning previous opinions, biases, and assumptions, especially as new information becomes available. So most of us have pretty strong opinions on issues, and often we can be really stubborn about those opinions. So to think critically, we have to say, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe there's a, a, a better answer for this issue. I'll consider it, think about it, instead of just focusing on my previous opinion. And this doesn't mean you don't have core values that you aren't willing to change. It means that those things that aren't core values, um, and especially things that you don't know that much about, you, you want to be open-minded about. So this is thinking that moves beyond personal beliefs and experience and the attempt to see those other perspectives. Uh, all of us have backgrounds that shape the way we think, and so critical thinking involves stepping beyond that uh, we can never be truly objective. We always have our own experience and beliefs that are informing the way we see the world. But if we can try to put that aside, we're more likely to see the whole picture or see an issue more accurately. And this often involves finding other sources, whether it's just a conversation with someone or it's a news report, a study, those kinds of things. And so to think critically, uh, we have to look outside ourselves, but we also have to question the trustworthiness of the sources of information we found. And so later on in the class, we'll talk about trustworthiness of sources, what makes a good source, uh, what makes a source that's not really trustworthy. And so for now, I would say, think about, first of all, are you only looking at sources that confirm your beliefs? Um, then you're not really thinking critically because you're really just looking for information that's going to make you feel better. Um, are you looking at information that can be verified? So, for example, you see a study, do you check to make sure that that study has been confirmed in other studies? Um, and then also, um, this means that you're being really careful of things like Facebook. And when you see something on Facebook, you're asking yourself, okay, is that true? Looking it up, trying to verify it, uh, even if it's an image, because images can be falsified. And so you want to always verify the, the accuracy of an image or a piece of information. So for critical thinking for issues, when you're thinking about talking about an issue in class uh, or arguing about an issue in a paper, uh, one thing, like I said before, is to recognize that you could be wrong. Uh, you have to be willing to change your mind about, you know, not everything, but but issues that are major issues that you don't have all the information about. You have to be willing to look at the information and consider it and recognize that there could be evidence, factual evidence that proves you wrong, and you have to accept that at, at a certain point, right? Or Or you should. Um, this is also this also means recognizing that you don't know everything because how could you? Uh, to go back to the issue of healthcare reform, there are so many moving parts. It's such a complicated issue that it's hard to know much about it, let alone everything. So so many of us have uninformed opinions, and I, and I would say even I I have looked into it as much as I can but I still have a limited opinion about what we, what exactly we should do as far as healthcare reform, uh, because I don't have all the answers. There are things I don't know. There are answers I um, don't have. And so it's really important for me to recognize that. 
uh, and I can have an opinion to an extent, but know that, okay, I might find information that, that changes that opinion. Uh, so it's also important to consider other perspectives as you think about this, uh, especially if those perspectives bring in facts that, that could change your mind, uh, and to try to understand people you disagree with. So often it's um, really easy to just shut them down or ignore them, uh, but if you try to understand them and really see where they're coming from, even if you, you know, even if they have a viewpoint that you despise, that you just cannot get on board with, you think it's unethical, if you try to understand where they're coming from uh, as a thought process rather than agreeing with them, then you're going to understand their perspective better. Uh, something that can be really helpful is putting multiple perspectives into dialogue with each other. So to go back to the healthcare reform uh, debate, if you were to, as you're thinking, or maybe you're drafting, writing out some possibilities, to think about, okay, what, what would someone who believes that we should have a single-payer system, or in other words, everyone's covered by government health insurance, what is their perspective? What is their opinion? How about someone who thinks that we should really only have employer health care except for, for the elderly? Um, what about someone who thinks adults should provide their own health care, but we should cover children? Um, why do they think that? Or someone who thinks that, you know, we should have a tier system where a, a lot of people are on Medicaid uh, under a certain income level. Um, other people have employer health insurance or buy their own health insurance. So what are those different perspectives? Why do they think the way they do? And then have their perspectives talk to each other, and that'll help you better understand the issue. And dialogue is something you're going to practice this week, and then we're going to read a dialogue uh, from Plato, which it doesn't quite work that way, um, but it's still interesting. And then for your final project, I'll have you write a dialogue. So we will return to this as well. But I encourage you to use it not just for class, but also in, in life, all of these concepts. Um, when you do research, choose your sources carefully. Like I said, be very careful about Facebook, about online sources where you don't know where the information came from. Um, and also be open to evidence you don't like. Too often, it's easy to dismiss something we don't want to see or don't want to hear. We ignore it. Uh, we don't want to read it. We don't want to listen to it. And so, you know, be open to evidence. Be open to evidence, especially if it's a lot of evidence. It's hard to disprove. It's confirmed by other sources. Uh, you know, if you just dismiss that, then, um, then you're ignoring perspectives that are really important for your issue. Uh, and then you're going to be easily accused of ignoring evidence. You're going to your argument's going to be easily refuted. Okay, so in addition to critical thinking, I also want you to read critically. And so anytime you engage uh, with one of the readings for class, or a video for class, or a source that you're using for an argument, um, read critically. So what this means is. First, read through the argument and try to find out what it is. So just get an overview of the argument. Um, once you've done that, you'll probably have a sense of whether or not you agree with it. Not always, but a lot of the time you will. And then question your reaction to the argument, checking for your own biases that led you to agree with it without question. Um, so if you were like, yes, this is right, I agree, I agree. Think about, okay, why was I so willing to agree with this argument? Uh, if it was that you read it and disagreed with it without considering it, you just didn't want to read it, you didn't like it, maybe you didn't even want to finish it at first, then think about, okay, why? What are my biases that led me to disagree with it without really giving it a fair chance? And this won't always be the case that you're one or the other. Sometimes you'll be able to read and see, oh, that, that makes a lot of sense, but here this seems like a weak argument. Um, but when you do have those stronger reactions or, or you're trying to fully see what the argument is, question why you thought the way you thought or reacted the way you did. Uh, and so then as you're analyzing these arguments, look for strengths and flaws regardless of your argument or of your agreement. Um, so if you agreed with it, 
it's going to be easier to see strengths, but also look for the flaws. If you disagreed, it's going to be easy to see the flaws, but also look for the strengths. And think about maybe it's not a strength for you or a flaw for you, but what about someone who would strongly disagree or strongly agree with the argument? Um, why, why would someone react in that way? How could that argument be effective for that particular audience? Uh, and so that's something to keep in mind as you read. Again, first find out what the argument is and then look for those strengths and flaws. And so um, one way to think about this is as playing the believing and doubting games, uh, the believing game and then the doubting game. And this is from uh, Peter Elbow. And what it means is uh, as you read, and, and this is especially helpful as, if you're analyzing and you're rereading an argument, um, you can go through and think, okay, well, I agreed with this argument, but I'm going to play the doubting game and assume I don't. What flaws will I find? Or I disagreed with this argument, but I'm going to pretend I don't uh, that I do agree with it. What strengths do I find? And so it kind of puts you in a different mindset. And this takes practice. So we will practice with um, playing the believing and doubting game, reading these arguments uh, throughout the quarter. Uh, the midterm will include an analysis. So we'll continue to talk about how to analyze arguments using some additional concepts from class. Um, but this is the kind of thinking that you need to do as you uh, read these arguments. Okay. So for practice, because we're going to do some practice before you have an assessment, before you have that midterm that has the analysis portion, before you write your own arguments. Uh, so the first practice is exercise two on pages 42 to 43 of Barnett and Badeau's From Critical Thinking to Argument. And those guidelines are in Blackboard. And I'll actually show those guidelines to you here in a second, just in case you have questions that I can answer quickly here. Uh, and then um, you should also apply this to reading and discussion for week two and then throughout the quarter. But we'll, we'll really focus on these critical thinking questions uh, during week two especially. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to show you, let me pull up this week. Uh, and I'll show you where that exercise is very quickly. Uh, so actually, this was up here. Um, week one, task eight, complete and submit exercise two. So if you open up this file, and I can't remember if I did this in the course overview video or not, but open this up, choose one of the following topics, and write down all the pro and con arguments you can think of in, say, 10 minutes. Um, then at least an hour or two later, return to your notes and see whether you can add to them. Uh, then write a balanced dialogue presenting each idea as strongly as possible. If none of these topics interest you, ask your instructor about the possibility of choosing a topic of your own. And that's fine if you want to do that. So there's some suggested topics here. So what I'm asking you to do is choose just one and then uh, write down pros and cons. So for example, A says colleges with large athletic programs should pay student athletes a salary or stipend. What are all the reasons you can think that they should do that? What are all the reasons you can think of that they should not? Um, do that, take some time to think about it, and then create a dialogue in which those pros and cons talk to each other. So you can either do opinion one, opinion two, and, and do it that way, or you can be more creative if you want to give the characters names, um, write a little story with it, put in action as well, you can do that. But what I'm really looking for is whether or not you can think of different viewpoints for one specific issue, and then have those viewpoints interact to come to a better understanding of the issue. Okay, so this should be turned in all in one document. So have your pros and cons up at the top, then your dialogue. And length is tough because this is kind of me seeing where you're at in terms of coming up with uh, different viewpoints. So roughly half an hour to an hour working on this would be the best way to measure how much you should put into it. For your dialogue, of course, have at least three-fourths of a page um, or, you know, view single space, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, don't have just two lines because that's not really showing an interaction between the viewpoints. 
Um, but have that dialogue where the conversation is happening with those different viewpoints on the issue. Okay. And then after that, you'll discuss critical thinking and the exercise in this um, week one task nine discussion. And make sure you answer the questions here in your discussion. So that's my little intro. Hope, hopefully that what didn't drag on too long. Um, let me know if you have any questions as you work on exercise two or work on the discussion. Thanks. Bye.